I'm reading this on behalf of the Occupy Oakland movement that said, on January 28th, Occupy Oakland will take over a vacant building in the city of Oakland to establish a new home. The movement action will begin with a two-day festival called the Oakland Rise Up Festival at the new building site, the location of which will remain a surprise until the day of the event. The seized building will be converted into a social center and a meeting place for the movement as well as the people of Oakland. This building takeover was approved by the Occupy Oakland General Assembly and signals a new direction for the Occupy movement, putting vacant buildings at the service of the community and not the banks. Despite a nationwide housing crisis, this, thousands of buildings like Bacon and Oakland, and millions across this country. The Occupy Oakland Moving Committee states, like millions of people in this country, Occupy Oakland has no home. <laughs> January 28th, move in day, we're going to change that. We're going to occupy a large vacant building to convert it into a social center. So come join us today in this It will be a festival all that weekend to celebrate. During the Occupy Oakland camp, the movement provided food, shelter, medical services, and much more to anyone who asked for them. In fact, they didn't even have to. They could just show up. It was recently disclosed that crime in Oakland dropped 19% during the weeks that the camp was here at Oscar Grant Plaza. And further than that, the Oakland Police Chief Jordan was aware of this drop, as well as Chief Juan. In a letter to Mayor Carr, he stated, not sure how we want to share this good news. It may be counter to our statement that the Occupy movement is negatively impacting crime in Oakland. Nonetheless, the camp was forcibly evicted from Oscar Grant Franco Gallo Plaza on the grounds that it threatened the health and safety of citizens. Ironically, when the OPD evicted us, they threatened the health and safety of many more Oakland citizens with their quote-unquote less than lethal ammunition, of which put a uh, Iraq veteran in the hospital due to a tear gas canister that he was shot in the face. The OPD is being investigated for its actions against Occupy Oakland. They also face that possible federal after over a decade of abusing Oakland residents, Occupy Oakland responded to this first eviction by calling for a general strike of 3,000 people who retook this plaza and established the second camp. And we responded to the second coordinated West to the second eviction coordinated West Coast Fort shutdown. Both events succeeded in shutting down the Oakland Fort due to tens of thousands of supporters showing up. Sometimes even at 5:30 in the morning. Since then, despite this public support, the Oakland Police Dog Department, under Mayor Kwan's watch, has arrested dozens of occupied Oakland people at Oscar Grant Plaza. Many were detained for days, though the charges were not pursued because they would never stand up in court. As a result of this persistent oppression and harassment, the movement has been unable to continue to provide food and shelter, medical care, and other services here at Oscar Grant Plaza. The city, while claiming claiming it cannot afford to provide these services itself, or its citizens spent millions of taxpayer dollars on police action against Occupy while neglecting the needs of its citizens. The movement assembly has written a letter to Mayor Kwan which states, if you try to evict this again, we will make your lives more miserable than you think. Our response remains in one of the following forms, blockading the air Occupying City Hall indefinitely, shutting down the Oakland door, calling on anonymous for solidarity. We all know what happened. It will be in our mutual interest to respect our obligation by recognizing our residents in eminent domain. We are sure that we all look forward to the needs of Oakland people finally and On January 28th, the day of the takeover, occupiers will rally here at Oscar Grant Plaza at 12 p.m. noon at the corner of 14th and Broadway. 
the area who want to get involved and have suggestions for specific uses of the space. It's up to all of us to create the kind of society that we want to live in. And this building will be a microcosm, if not a macrocosm, of that. So for more information, updates, and a schedule for the two-day Oakland Rise Up Festival, please visit OccupyOaklandMovement.org. My name is uh, John Most, and I'm reading a statement that has been um, written by the Occupy Oakland Movement Day Building Assembly. Uh, and this is actually a letter to Mayor Jean Kwan, to the Oakland Police Department, and to the Oakland City Council. Oh, so sorry. As you probably know, Occupy Oakland is planning the occupation of a building on January 28th that will serve as a social center, convergence center, headquarters, free kitchen, and place of housing for Occupy Oakland. Like so many other people, Occupy Oakland is homeless while buildings remain vacant and unused. For Occupy, this is due in large part to yourselves, having evicted us twice from public space that was rightfully ours. For others, it is because of the housing bubble, predatory lending, the perpetual crises of capitalism, and far-reaching histories of imperialism and systemic violence. Our families, friends, and communities built the buildings that sit empty in post-industrial Oakland. Now these buildings outnumber the homeless and represent the theft of our collective labor as the class of the unproperty and dispossessed. Allowing this building to remain vacant while so many are in need is injurious theft and justice. It's extra-legal occupancy. It's not. When Occupy Oakland was first evicted on October 25th, we organized a general strike on November 2nd with only a week to plan. November 2nd proved our strength and relevancy. Conservative estimates said 20,000 took the streets, but for those of us who marched on the ports, it could have been 100,000. November 2nd was an inspiration for the Occupy movement and a public condemnation of your violent repression. Eventually, we reoccupied Oscar Grant Plaza, only to suffer a second violent eviction on November 14th. At this time, there was a national crackdown on the Occupy movement as evictions were happening in Boston, New York City, Atlanta, Portland, Oregon, and elsewhere. It was revealed that you, Gene Kwan, had been coordinating with federal agents how to best repress dissent. In response, Occupy Oakland was the impetus for a West Coast port shutdown in solidarity with Longview ILWU workers whose union is under attack by EGT. The action escalated to a national and then international action as more occupations signed on. In Oakland alone, the shutdown cost some $8.7 million in lost revenue and proved that when civic and economic institutions do not serve us, we can shut them down. Since the beginning of the Occupy movement, when you have exacted violent repression on the movement, the movement has proven its power. If you try to evict again, the Occupy Oakland, uh, Occupy Oakland will make your lives more miserable than you make ours. The Move-In Assembly of Occupy Oakland has come to consensus that a response this time can take one or more of the following forms. Blockading the airport indefinitely, occupying City Hall indefinitely, shutting down the Oakland ports, calling on anonymous for solidarity. It will be in the mutual interest of Occupy Oakland and the city if you respect the building occupation by recognizing Occupy Oakland's residency. We are sure that we all look forward to the needs of Oakland's people finally being met. Sincerely, the Occupy Oakland Move-In Assembly.